Today, I'm going to share all the things I did to rescue this road bike and stick around to check out my new starting. <laughs> So I'm always going to start out with an inspection and this one's pretty easy to inspect uh, at first glance. It's missing a front wheel, it's really dirty, you can see it has really good parts and it's a high performance geometry bike. It's got a, a, a very deceiving look sticker on it <laughs> and it's a silver stoner, <laughs> a silver stone. It's not bad. Well, Da Vinci brand, it's a, like a Canadian brand, so pretty sure they're just Chinese made. There you go, you got Shimano Altegra. Not sure about the crank, we have an Altegra rear derailleur, and by the looks of it, it's 5700. There's a Shimano RSX, RS. Anyways, it's a Shimano wheel, so not so bad. I can tell you those are Vittoria tires, Vittoria Rubinos, brakes. The bar tape is really messed up. <laughs> Notice I can tell you are STI 5700, so 105. You have an Easton stem, it's just aluminum stem, and uh, she needs to be clean. <laughs> That's a lot of work. Just take a look here at the bar tape a little closer. So what I did is I just quickly wrapped it up because I want to wash it and I don't want the, uh, the pressure washer to mess up the tape, so. Um, Oh, we definitely need brake pads. I've put on a front wheel that I had and we're gonna head down to the car wash. So as you can see here, I'm just gonna use the pressure washer. It takes a little bit to, to get the soap going. So I'm just gonna wash it down, see how, how good I can get it, how clean I can get it. But some of that dirt's just not coming off. Like some of that dirt, it's, just, it's like ground in there. And when you get like stains like that on a bike, you, you pretty much have to strip it down and clean it properly. Well, the, the rear derailleur is cleaning up really nice. I cut that little piece off the front derailleur because I didn't like it. It was basically frayed out. You can see here, just kind of pulled out the, the housing, pulled out that old cable. But you can see how it works here. The cables are internal. You just find underneath 5700 series STI, the uh, there's a little hole in there. It's, it's really, really hard to show. And that's where the cable will go. And you find it by pushing the cable out and then really paying attention to where it goes in. Since this frame doesn't really have any barrel adjusters, I'm going to add this here inline adjuster that I got off of one of this, this guy's friend's bike. So I'm just gonna make sure that the holes are in the cable are uh, alled out. So the cable slides nicely. You can just see there's a nice little kind of plastic coating in there and it, it's a, it's decent uh, shift housing. I'm pretty sure it's Shimano. There we go. You don't really have to do this with shift housing, but I like to make sure. So I have the new cable. I've greased it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> My hair is not that white in real life. <laughs> and this here is going to get difficult. Now, I wasn't able to uh, to show it all. I, I, I wasn't able to film this because I really had to pay attention to uh, try to find that little feed hole for the cable. There we go. I got it through finally. That's something you have to experience on your own. I put uh, ferrules on there on the, uh, the two cut ends of the housing and I think that was a mistake. This uh, barrel adjuster, it uh, it works all right, but it's going to fit right onto the cables, so no ferrules are needed. It kind of got stuck there, and so I just kind of used pliers to, you know, grab one end, and I, I loosened it up. So there we go, it's nice and loose. I removed those ferrules. Like, you can't record everything. It's, it's too much. And a lot of it is just generic, and people are going to skip over it anyways. Here's my new way of greasing the cable. I just kind of shove it in there to my squeeze bottle. This is that like free cat grease that I had, which I've had now for a long time. And you just feed the cable in. And I was trying to do it there and for some reason it was just getting stuck. So there it's feeding in nice. Ah, there. I, <laughs> I poked my finger. <laughs> so yeah, I, di I didn't show that either. And here, here's how it works. The, the barrel adjuster just, you can see my band-aid on there. <laughs> The barrel adjuster just fits right onto the uh, the housing. It it's basically has ferrules included. And now I've improved this bike because you can uh, adjust the front shifting properly. I, I don't know why uh, 
any bike manufacturer would make a bike and not design barrel adjusters on the frame. You know, it was probably designed for uh, the older series, the 5600 series, where the uh, the cable stuck out. So there we go, I'm just tightening on the, uh, the pinch bolt. And gave the cable a little clip here. And here's a little trick that I do. Instead of cutting the cable, uh, you know, right down to like, you know, less than an inch, so it's impossible to re-tighten, I, I leave a lot. A good chunk of it just in case I do need to retighten because those barrel adjusters are they're, they're not infallible it might not be enough and I may have to uh, really tighten up that uh, that cable now there should be a certain amount of slack in there but that's a little too much so we're gonna go up here and look 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 here there's uh, there's too much slack you, you can literally pull the housing right out of the uh, the stop so that means we have to tighten it up and I'm glad I didn't cut my cable yet Oh, we're just gonna test it out we got our trim and going up to the big ring you can see it's kind of uh, clangity and then it, it finally went up so the way we fix that is we either have to loosen and retighten the cable or we move over to our cable housing to our inline barrel adjuster and we just tighten it up a little bit and let's see Let, let's see if that worked for us you don't have to do too much and if you do, then there's a good chance that the cable was just too loose at the pinch bolt, and you're gonna have to retighten it there. So look at that, right up, right up into the big ring. And we hardly use our barrel adjuster, which means that we have a lot more barrel adjuster. You can adjust it as needed. So we move to the back here. I, I didn't show it, but that brake was basically seized up. And the reason it was because of this old cable housing, which is kind of bent. I got the old cable and now that I have it apart, I'm just simply gonna replace the cable. Now what I've done here is I just cut a new piece of housing and the old one you can see is like really bent. So what we want is a, a shorter piece. It'll make for a cleaner transition from cable stop to the rear brake. So it, this is pretty easy. We just kind of feed that in and you can see that there's a little bit of a jank there in the, in the housing, but that's okay. We just have to move it a little bit and now it's fine. And got it all put together here. As you can see, the brake's working fine. There's no, uh, there's nothing holding it up, so it's not seizing and that's good to go. Now, that old bar tape was kind of chewed up. It looked okay on the tops when I showed you earlier, but the uh, in the drops, it was kind of beat up. So we're just gonna give them new bar tape. This stuff here is, is pretty generic. It, it's nice bar tape, but you know, again, there's always that problem with these uh, kind of clamp covers that they give. There's that little bit of sticky and sometimes it's just not good enough. So what I do is I take a little piece of this electrical tape that I found on the ground <laughs> and I'm still using and I'm just going to wrap it up here just to kind of hold that piece on while I wrap. And I'm just messing with it. Just, just leave it alone and start wrapping. <laughs> so here's our tape. Now, I showed before in a different video how if you make a mistake and you're wrapping right at the beginning, it can cause a problem, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna actually do this a little more pro style. You can see there, there's kind of a little nib, but that's basically the edge of the of the bar. And what we can do, if, if there's a little too much, we can just trim it off. So you can see, uh, I left a lot there, but you know, like I said, we can just trim that off. So again, you know, just a quick kind of bar tape refresher here. Just kind of wrap from the inside out so that it uh, it flows with the the natural uh, movement of the hand in the drops. I'm sure, like I could explain this uh, differently using different uh, descriptors and verbs and adjectives and such, and maybe I will. I'm, I'm going to do it in that that figure eight style because in the last bar tape video I did, I didn't reverse the direction of the bar tape on the top of the bars. And I did that specifically for that rider, but this rider here doesn't have any inline levers and it's a flat top bar, so there's a very good chance that this guy is gonna be riding a little bit a little bit more pro style, right? So when he's on the tops, what's gonna happen is his hand, the butt of his hands are gonna move backward and that'll be the natural direction that we want the bar tape to wrap. You can see here it, uh, it's going pretty well. 
the uh, I, I don't even have to really inspect the back of the uh, the clamp and the hoods. It, it's wrapping quite nicely. It looks really good and I foresee no problems. I didn't really show my best work in the last video and there's a reason for that. Basically, if a pro shows you how to do everything pro, then you're always gonna try to mimic it and you're never gonna get it right. But if you see how normal people do things, you know, the average person, then you can see what it's gonna be like for you and what type of hardship, <laughs> okay, we'll call it hardship, that you're going to uh, experience or perhaps experience. There we go, I'm not gonna cut it yet. I'm just gonna tape it in. And I didn't really show the cutting. I, I showed that in a different video and you can see it, it's not too bad. Now, I'm just checking the, the headset preload and that's loose. So what I do is I grab the front brake and I just kind of shake it and you can, you can feel the movement of the fork. So we're just gonna quickly fix that. It's not carbon, so we're not really gonna crack anything. But still, we, we just kind of count off our, our turns, you know, maybe about a turn each bolt, and then we'll tighten it up. So we'll just test, well, it was really loose. Now, how does that happen? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm aware of how to fix it and I'm aware of the problem. Like it just happens, especially when someone hands you a bike like this and just check it here with the front brake. There was a lot of play there. They just say, here, do your best, try to fix it up. and. When you know what to look for, it goes very, very quickly. So there we go. I just uh, basically did the same amount of turns to tighten that I did to loosen, and it should be good to go. Now, I'm just gonna lube this chain. I checked it with the, uh, the ruler, and it's perfect. This chain is like brand new, so we're just gonna lube it and work it in. And I have this oil here, an oiler. <laughs> I'm just gonna oil the like the pivot points on uh, the derailleur because eh, this thing, like, it's been sitting for a while, so maybe it needs some oil. Maybe the last time it was tuned up, there was no oil. Eh, I've gotten bikes where there's been no grease whatsoever put in them, and eh, I have a perfect example of that. I had a, a Scott Plasma Pro, and you, I'll, I'll try to link it here if I remember. So the, the rear derailleur, I'm just gonna put a little oil there on the uh, on the adjusting screws, and I'll do these like <laughs> these pivot points. But yeah, quite honestly, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Really, you take it apart, and then you uh, you service the derailleur fully, and it's completely fine. There's a little bit of oil on there. I suppose I could flip the bike over and do the other pivot points, but I'm just gonna do a shift test here. Oh, and look at that! I <laughs> My first shift, and I friggin' dropped the chain. <laughs> All right, so maybe we have to uh, do a little adjusting here. Well, let's see, let's try it. I adjusted the rear derailleur uh, before, just using the barrel adjuster. So what I did is I, I turned it all the way in, so the least amount of tension, and I just uh, tightened the, the cable. Yeah, it was, that was perfectly fine. Like there are some parts of this bike that are absolutely new. And there are other parts that uh, just having some trouble, like that bar tape. But really, the drivetrain is almost excellent. It, it, it's almost like it's new. Like, sure, it looks a little ratty on the the, uh, the logo on the crank, but the rest of it is great. You can see that the chain just kind of jumps up, jumps down, very nicely, nice and smooth. Front derailleur's working properly. So. Here we go, bike's all done. You can see uh, I got that barrel adjuster put in, kind of adds the value, adds, improves the shifting. I changed the cable on the front derailleur, lubed the chain, didn't do a whole lot to the rear derailleur, just tightened up the, uh, the cable and used the barrel adjuster to adjust. I changed the cable on the rear brake. There's no more seizing. I didn't show it, but I, uh, I made sure that the seat post uh, moves. I adjusted the preload on the headset. I don't even think that's a carbon fork. And I did the front brake pads. The bar tape looks great. It actually looks very, very good. I tried to get it as uh, even as possible, each wrap. And there's no clamp showing on either side. There we go. It's really nice. That rear piece of housing. And it didn't take too much to get this bike back on the road. I uh, hope you liked this video. hope it helps you out. And I'll catch you on the next one.